Ladies and gentlemen, you've asked for it, so you're getting it. Roll the intro. And I'm surprised that uh, so many of you voted for the snowmobile collection. I just really wanted to know what you guys were interested in. So there you have it, uh, RC snowmobile collection. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's I, I really have way too much of these. It took the entire table and you'll see, you'll see. So I decided to place them in order in which they came. And uh, most of them uh, are very close to be a working order. So I will go through each one of these and talk to you a little bit more about each one of them so that uh, you know a little more about each one of them as we go. If you have any question, post down below. I will do my best to answer every single one of them if they're not uh, repetitive or something like that. So let's start with the oldest one. This you might have seen before if you have thank you so much this is the very first snowmobile i've ever done uh, it's also for some reason the most viewed video i have over a hundred and something thousand views it's pretty insane so this snowmobile was my first uh actual attempt at making a track that would uh, be able to handle the kind of power i was going to put through it it had originally a a tacking uh motor i I have no idea how many kV or whatever it was, but the motor was really strong enough to blow the track off. It would just jump over the drive drum. So what I did is I tried to make the drive drum and improve it and improve it with the antenna little pieces and all that. Really didn't work all that well. These were wood chops, uh, wood sticks for barbecues and stuff like that. And you know, wood and water and humidity really didn't work all that well. But oddly enough, I never broke one of them. It's like they, you can see it almost. It, it, they, they chewed up a little bit, but they never broke through, which is surprisingly uh, interesting in my opinion. And the track was from these little Tonka bulldozers that you could, you know, we all had one when we were a child or something. And uh, it was just a aluminum channel that was a C channel that was bent to make a suspension. And it works surprisingly well for how rudimentary it was but of course I needed to have a better transmission because I just tweaked the motor just a little bit so you could still use the stock transmission it wasn't the best solution in the world so I went to the very first time I made a, a gearbox don't know if I'll be able to do this one hand so in there there was just a single uh, gear and well actually there was three gears middle gear middle gear here middle gear here and the bigger tracks gear here at a bearing so two metal gears here was not the best idea in the world but i guess it got me where i wanted to go and uh it was it was a great first attempt to be honest you know 3d printing was not really a big thing in like what it what was it like 2013 2014 it wasn't really a big thing so I, I commissioned a company in the u.s to print this for me which uh, was a uh, I don't remember the name, but they, they made a gearbox for me. There's still a video on it, I believe, on my channel. A couple of years went by and eventually I decided to make uh, a RMK. So that's the very first series I make on, the, uh, on my channel. It was basically the RMK original. And a lot of people told me after it broke down that I should rebuild it. And, uh, you know, for a long time I, I decided not... Uh, to do it for a couple of reasons one of them is it was pretty beat up and uh, I could salvage another frame for another snowmobile and pull it all back together but it was it was originally all aluminum before all 3d printing and all that so most of it is like uh, glued together and not really optimized so I would really have to start all over including the tunnel and the running boards so I don't know if you really want to see the RMK back just let me know I'll do my best here's the thing okay let's do this 
I'm gonna do my best to make pretty much every single one of these running by the end of the fall. So before the snow comes, except for a couple like this has never been more than just a tunnel. I'll get to it in a second. But most of them are very close to be working snowmobiles. So I'll do my best to get as many snowmobile working before the end of, of the fall as possible. So you can, it could be a good idea to do a comparison. Just get all the snowmobiles and do a hill climb and see which one is the best. Anyways, enough talking about these two snails. All right, third sled. This was and still is my rush drag sled. What I mean by drag sled is that it has a shorter rear skid and it has a unique suspension as well. Let me try to... It's, it's made in a different way. There's only one spring because, you know, at speed it doesn't really need that much suspension if it's on flat ground, like ice or something like that. And uh, I didn't have the wheels that it was testing for summer. And uh, the suspension was actually very nice. And uh, it's probably one of the very few rush that I have that is completely working as of now. It has all the electronics, everything is working on it. So this one is probably going to show up in a video possibly in the comparison of all these lads together so it's, it's not made for deep snow but i mean the track has some studs so in in the ice condition and stuff like that it's actually pretty good all right moving on this was my first big scale 3d printed project it didn't go anywhere the plan was to get that track which is the entity snow conversion for baja 5b or stuff like that it's, it, i bought this a very long time ago these are two tracks put together and it, it was you know you always base your design on the biggest limiting factor so the limiting factor in my opinion was the track it's a great track but it's surprisingly heavy and it's difficult to turn so my plan was to make that whole entire snowmobile a big like this is almost a quarter scale sled, but it didn't go anywhere because, you know, I wasn't satisfied with what it looked like. It's a very rough, pretty much all around. So I wasn't satisfied with that. So then I contacted my cousin. I said, man, let's, let's do a, let's do a, a ski do because the, nobody made a ski do G4 at the time. So moving on to this one, my plan was to make a 1718 scale. These are all 1718 scale depending on who you ask. They are actually like 1715 scale, doesn't matter. They're all the same class. So the plan was to make it very simple. I didn't have big plans on it, for it at the start. It's really rough, pretty much all around as well. But you know, there's a few things stood out from the start. These are pretty much the same looking suspension as in the G4, just made a little different. And uh, servo pretty much goes in the same way, flat low center of gravity and it used the arm k and yamaha transmission it's pretty much the same thing and uh the skidoo tunnel like the the yellow skidoo anyway we'll talk about this a little more later but I, I didn't like the way it was going to and uh the suspension was my limiting factor i couldn't find find something that was good and i, I pretty quickly ditched the idea of a of that scale and I was like if I want something really cool that would be let's make a one-fifth scale so these are just parts of the original one-fifth uh, one scale it doesn't even have a serial number at back then there's not even a hole for the headlights so well there was a hole but there was like no holes here for the headlights that was the first blue prototype you saw well even before that blue prototype these were the f some of the few first parts and uh, something really cool I wanted to do from the start was to have a little suspension so that when you open the hood it would like pop out like this but it will it would uh, it, it didn't pan out because it would catch up on here and it wouldn't work properly with the geometry it had so I decided let's not include this thing it's still possible to add it but it, it wasn't working so I decided to ditch the idea it used a simple Lego air shock it was surprisingly smooth but that idea didn't pan out but it wasn't really a big problem just to take the hood off completely like this so that's why i keep going with that one and then after a few testing the machine was getting pretty dirty with like grime and dirt so i was like oh let's make another one this one has been through a lot this was officially my first 
uh, serial numbered one, it was triple zero because it was still a prototype and uh, it's been through quite a lot of stuff. I even made a uh, front suspension with wheels in the front to drive in the summer because it was still part of the summer testing. It was before, well, before fall last year. So it, it didn't really change a whole lot since then. A few parts broke and I replaced them with different color because that's what I had. It's, it's the test sled. It doesn't really matter. It, it just needs to work. And uh, when you're rapid prototyping, you don't want to take the time to put the different filaments in. You just take what you have ready. That's why the tunnel is red and the sides are black and whatever. No real color scheme here. And uh, this is this is the electronics that was uh, flooded in the water, you could say. So um, that's why I, t I took them out to dry them. But I'm still going to keep this one for testing. Like maybe revisit the weight system. There's a lot of guys that left me opinions on how I could I, I could do this but when you think about it it's really difficult to precisely control side to side and a, a very quick moving because this is moving a lot faster than full size sled when you're sidling and all that so I don't want to talk too much about this but we'll revisit that maybe maybe sometime this is a TPU track so this is like a rubber 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 this is like a TPU rubber so it's very flexible shouldn't break but at the same time I did some very early testing it's very stiff like it doesn't want to unfold as you can see it's it just keeps its shape very well which is not a good thing if you want a low resistance uh, track so it can have a lot of power so I, I guess I'll install this in testing in the winter but I don't see this track being very effective in the long run all right, moving on to the nitro one. Uh, it's still in pieces. Uh, since the last time you saw it, it wasn't very used. Uh, it wasn't. I was personally a little disappointed by the performance for two reasons. One of them is that the carburetor was tuned for the inside. It was perfectly tuned for inside, but I was like, oh well. While I'll get outside, I'll just turn the knot, the needle to adjust for the cold. And that'll be fine but it turns out it wasn't really i wasn't able to turn it very well so that's why i didn't take it out multiple times and also there was a coolant leak that was not related to the motor itself it's just because the track ripped out the the cooling tunnel the, the cooling line from the tunnel so that's why it just puked out the water so that's why i stopped using that for that reason but after that i redid the testing off camera in the in the street and it was pretty good because I changed the gearing. One of the reasons it wasn't all that great is because the gearing was too uh, too speedy, you could guess. So I changed my uh, my opinion on the motor and put a bigger spur gear right beside it. And also dropped a tooth on the track. It really made a big difference. But again, I didn't have much time to test it. And it was off camera at like past midnight. So it was dark anyways. It wasn't good. But then I started to run other problems like the, the exhaust was never really nicely sealed where the the uh, exhaust m uh, manifold went through the sled so it, it kind of all vapory inside it's kind of oily it's not great so I still need to work on that that's why you didn't see it come back last year but it's still a working snowmobile and I just need to put it back together fix a couple of its bugs and it should be fine so moving on, I eventually made the Yamaha Viper kit. Um, this one doesn't have everything because you could you could fit the same uh, durability kit from the Polaris to the Yamaha Viper, but you need to change the bulkhead and st the skis and pretty much everything in the front. But at least you can have some replacement part if you break an arm. So, but it has the new uh, uh, skid with adjustable tensioning system and also the heavy duty pedals so this one is going to do an appearance uh, pretty soon when we'll get snow to do comparison against pretty much every other sled you see here and then comes the summer and then i spotted these two great units I, I first found that one but i was like they came in different edition this one is 27 megahertz you can you can see the huge antenna and this one is 2.4 gigahertz so there's a few difference i really wanted to have the very white like a uh, rebranded like remade uh, Polaris because that's what I have on my RMK all the way over there but this one was the one I found first and uh, you know I, I just look up on and on and eventually I see one popping out and I make an offer to the guy and ships it and whatever it, it ends up here so I've 
Two brand new, pretty much never touched snowmobile. Might be a little defect here and there, but they're pretty much brand new. And I want to keep one of them for the record as like the, the, the original, like where it all started. But maybe I'll savage one of the, the frames for this and put it in the RMK. But at the same time, I, I don't really want to break the look of it. I'll, I'll think about something. Don't worry. Then moving on to this one. I didn't want to show you right away, but I, I guess I'll show you anyways. So this is my test uh, platform for the Arctic Cat Alpha. As you can see, it has a monorail alpha scale. Oh yeah. Uh, but I don't want to show too too much because it's still a work in progress and uh, suspension is not like it's it's rubber band suspension. The goal is to be as simple as possible, like very few parts, just plug and play and assemble. It's pretty simple. That's the goal. I don't know if it'll be able to do it. It's still missing the entire body panels and stuff and seat and but the the mainframe is there. So still work in progress. Coming soon. This was very difficult to find. I, I actually stumbled on Facebook and eventually just front page marketplace. I saw one of these. This is an awesome unit. I really, really want to do something with this, but I I, I have too many sleds. I, I don't know what I'll do with this just yet. But I really like the video on the Do uh, Rev. This is the Do Rev. This is not the Gen 4. This is the Rev, the original Rev or not the original, but y you get what, what I'm seeing here. I'm calling it the Rev. This was an awesome snowmobile, and when I did the conversion, it's, it, it went surprisingly like a, like a BRP. You'd be surprised how much these two separate machines are similar to their real counterpart. This one has a wider track by one inch in real life, but it really made a, a difference. This, these one, they, they, they get up and do a wheelie, while this one just, uh, I don't know, it, it floats, it, it hovers. I, I don't know, they, they really do like their own thing and it's pretty surprising anyways that's pretty much enough for this one still pretty much brand new i have the transmitter for all of these anyways getting into uncharted territory because i've wanted one of these snowmobiles for a very very long time but you know they're, they're very very big i mean they of course they're one fifth scale but they look a bit bigger than one fifth scale because my Gen 4 looks pretty much the same size, and this is like a short tunnel while mine is a long tunnel, long track. But this is, I mean, this is a huge machine. The guy I bought it from, uh, he started mudding some of them. This one is pretty much, almost pretty much stuck. But he put both tracks together so he could attempt to make a long track. I'll see what I do with this. But I have two of these units. This one is pretty torn up doesn't have much in here but you can see how much space there's in there look, look this is my hand these are huge i have big hands this is like 2xl hands anyways in, in, it doesn't really matter <laughs> so these two sled not quite sure what i'm doing with them just yet but I, I, i'll keep an eye out for this i'm probably not before you ask i'm probably not going to do a conversion kit for these because it's pretty much impossible to find them and it's not really worth my time to doing conversion kit for i don't know 10 people maybe it's it's not worth it really so probably not conversion kit for these two you could probably fit the conversion kit for this or this into this with a lot of patience and time i'm just yeah i, I don't have the time myself anyways we'll come, keep going have you seen one of these in person nitro snowmobile the only manufacturer that actually made a remote control snowmobile that was half decent, apart from, you know, the Arctic Cat from Jordan Crop, I think. I'm, I'm not too sure, but like to complete the entire collection, that, that's the only snowmobile I'm missing is the Jordan Crop Arctic Cat. But I mean, I don't have like $20,000. I, I don't know how much they were, they're worth. But like, this is probably the next big thing because they're one of the only companies that made a snowmobile it has some interesting hardware inside so it has a nitro engine a bell driven yeah bell driven would you believe there's nothing there, there's pretty much nothing complicated in something like this and you can see how much space there is like i could put my hands here and it's it's huge and that, that motor is at 0.21 i believe you could probably fit it point i don't know 0 0.32 0 0.38 i don't know it's, it's a lot of space in here 
But yeah, I'm really, really curious to compare this snowmobile to pretty much all of the snowmobiles you've seen before that. And I can't wait to see what it does. Oddly enough, that snowmobile was not too far from me. It was probably two, three hours drive from my place, which is surprising because I live in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it's it's been maybe started once or twice, he told me at least. And it's a very clean unit, not much driven, and uh, it's a surprising unit. Yeah, I'll probably do an in-depth video of this later, maybe, if you're interested. Just let me know what you like to see from these machines. Alright, enough of that one. Let's talk about Schottky. Oh yeah. So, the only thing between this and what you've seen in episode 4 is that I'm going to change my LiPo setup once again. So this is a 60C discharge rating. This is like what they use in helicopters. So uh, the previous one was probably a 45C. So this is, should supply a bit more amps, which is good because my ESC can take it and the motor can take it. So just more flow. So it should be even better in theory, but it's very lightweight and uh, I can't wait to test this thing in the snow. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Great snowmobile. This is the high power snowmobile, which you cannot see because I haven't done a video on it yet. Which I'm doing right now. Anyways, this was more of like a cinematic presentation. This is going to be more of a like in depth and it's like a go through skit and what went into that snowmobile specifically and uh, electronics and why these electronics more video step by step like uh, this section this section this section and put everything together and you end up with that snowmobile so well it's no big surprise it's a snowmobile like a, like this one it's a g4 and uh it's it's very heavy though it's it's really really heavy because the motor is huge and the esc is huge and the cooling solution is huge and yeah pretty much is everything is huge in that snowmobile and uh it's going to be awesome seriously this just looking at this myself it, it looks phenomenal anyways it's coming soon so you won't miss on very much it's really coming soon i still need to finish up a few things and uh do some mods to the electronics because yes i need to do some mods to the electronics it's pretty flipping awesome I'll, I'll see what i do so basically that was my collection of uh rc snowmobiles i've personally made more snowmobiles than what you see on the table here but these are the one i still have today that are mine uh there's still a few that i'm making for some people and don't ask me if i can make you one all right if there's something for sale, I'll let you know or I'll post it on the website. So, plan is from now on, I will make as much of these snowmobile working as possible so that I can do a comparison on what I can do with it. I really look into making them all work, except for this one. I can tell you right away which one are not going to be working. This one won't work. This one, no. This one, no for obvious reasons these one probably test them stuck because this is new version so it might be different from the two this is probably going to be working this i might I'll, I'll probably test it one of these two might be working like this one still has all the electronics from the original so this one might be working this one will not this one will be working this one will be kicking butts <laughs> And this one is going to be kicking the butts of every single one of these. Yeah. Do I have too much energy? I think I have too much energy. This is going to be awesome. All right. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, just leave me comments. Let me know what you think. Subscribe.